One last one. Say it with me. <sighs> All right, maybe, maybe you had a chance to rest over the last couple of days. Maybe it was more like frantic and running and doing and trying to figure things out. And so uh, there was one more rest stop that we're going to make today, and it's really going to connect to where we're going to go for the next month. But again, I want to define this word rest. It means a silence, a quiet waiting, a repose. We're going to read two portions of Psalms today, uh, two short little spots. And we're going to jump right in. So again, it's going to be on the screen, but if you have your Bible, you can look as well. Psalm chapter 40. Here's the first verse. I waited patiently for the Lord. All right, we're all miserable at being patient, so we're just going to end here, all right? We're just going to preach about one verse, right? Just this line, I waited patiently for the Lord. Again, let's look at this word, I waited patiently. It's an action. It means to tarry, to expect, and to wait for, wait on, and wait upon. I want us to realize that, right? That that's an important thing that sometimes we wait for, we wait on and, and upon. And this idea of expecting, right? Like when we're waiting for something and we're expecting God to do it, right? It's different than saying, well, I, I hope, I hope he's going to, ha- something's going to happen. But right? The, the psalmist is saying right here, I waited patiently for the Lord. And look how he goes on to say, I waited patiently for the Lord. He turned to me and heard my cry. This is a formula we saw last week. If you remember, wait, call, cry out. And God responds. He turns and he hears. The great thing is, he doesn't just hear us. He will act. But how many of us know it is hard to wait patiently sometimes, right? It's hard to sit there and go, okay, how about now? (laughs) How about an answer tomorrow? How about an answer this week? How about an answer this month? How about this year? How about this decade? We don't know how it's going to work. And if you're a music person you'll know that the band U2 did a song, pretty much the first portion of this uh, psalm. And so let's keep reading. I won't sing it, but we'll read it. It says, he lifted me out of the slimy pit. One of the translations said, a desolate pit, right? What is that picture of? It's deep. It made me feel like there is no way out. And he says, out of the mud and the mire. He set my feet on a rock and he gave me a firm place to stand. I want you to realize here, right? He didn't just hear us. Similar to what we read last week, other scriptures, that, that we cry out, we, we ask for help. God hears us, but here he's responding. And he responds with what? How you doing down there? Everything good? Don't worry about it. Everything's fine. No, no in this case, he responds with rescue. He, he takes us out of that slimy, desolate pit, right? And we can have this picture, right? If you've ever seen this in a movie and, or if you watch Mythbusters and they try to figure out is quicksand real and how to get out of it, anybody? Come on, it's kind of intriguing, right? All right, and there's that picture. And we have felt that sometimes. Like the more that we struggle, the more that we sink. The more that we, we try to do something on our own strength, it's not, it's not working. It actually feels like it's making things worse. And here the psalmist says, he lifted me out and he put my feet on a rock and he gave me a firm place to stand. So, so Jesus responds with real rescue, removal, relocation, and here comes the renovation. Some versions say this about he lifted me out and he gave me. It says he set and gave me. Some versions say, some, some say he set and made my feet. Remember last week we read that in Psalm 23? He makes me lie down, right? You ever, were, you ever, you ever told as a, as a kid, like, you need to take a nap? Anybody? You told your child that? Come on. Now, don't you wish someone would tell you that? Like, go take a nap. Yes, thank you. That's exactly what I was thinking. Right? Isn't that interesting how that changes? Why? Right? I always tell parents, too, when, they, when, when, they're, when their child is young and they say, oh, they won't sleep. They wake up so early. I said, don't worry, it will change. 
and it'll be the completely opposite. You're trying to get them to wake up. You're like, come on, please. Right? You were up. You looked at me. You had a conversation. Right? I remember that my mom used to tell these stories, and it was, I felt bad for her. She'd wake me up in the morning. She'd look at me. She'd have a full conversation, and then I'd go back to sleep. And then she'd come home from work and say, why didn't you do what I asked? Well, what do you mean? Well, I had a full conversation. You looked at me. You even responded. Oh, I don't remember any of that. Right? What does it have to do with my message? Nothing. But I wanted you to know about that. No, realize that sometimes, right, this verse, right, he lifted me out. He, he put me on, the, set my feet. And again, sometimes the versions say, he made me. He made me. Stay here. Stay here. This is where I want you to stay. And look what happens in the next verse. He put on, a, he put a new song in my mouth, a hymn of praise to our God. And sometimes when we wait patiently, if we're honest, we're, we're, we're inclined to do this. Hey God, I have some recommendations on how this should happen. I have some opinions and I have a specific timetable that I'd really like this to work. Uh, and if I can, you know, this is suggestion box is full. I'm filling it every day. Here we go. This, this would be good. Can you do this? And I, and I like it in this color and I like it in, in this way. And sometimes we need to just be silent and just wait patiently. But I like that, right? That's how this Psalm started out. I waited patiently for the Lord. And then it has that, it does it, it jumps right to the next spot. We don't know how long the Psalmist waited. But look at this verse. It says, he put a new song in my mouth. And this is why words are so powerful. This word, new, is a root word that means this. The word is chadash. And it means to renew, to repair, and restore. So let's go back to this verse and let's put it in context. He put a song of renewal in my mouth. He put a song of repair in my mouth. He put a song of restoration in my heart. Amen? And sometimes that's what he does. You, you, you've waited patiently. He not just hears you. Now he's responding and, and, and it produces this like, oh, you know what? This is what God has done. And there's another byproduct of this. He put a new song in my mouth, a hymn of praise to our God. Many will see and fear the Lord and put their trust in him. So people see it, they observe it, they witness it, they see it played out in real time in our lives, okay? And just to be a quick realization, in case you didn't know, people are watching you, especially as you start to say anything about Jesus, anything about God, anything about faith, anything about church, and they're curious, and they're going to start to watch you and see. So they're going to see it. They're going to see it played out. Then, then it says they will fear. Ultimately, that word means is revere. They're going to start to have a, an awe about it. Why? Because they're, they're going to see what God's doing in your life. And then it says then they, then they will put their trust. Trust means to be bold, confident, secure, and sure. And they will begin to trust not in themselves, but start to be curious and maybe start to see, observe, and be in awe and start to trust Jesus instead of themselves because they're watching you. They're seeing it played out in your life and they're saying, wow, how is this person doing this? How is it, how, how you respond to Jesus will impact others. And you're like, I didn't even say anything. I didn't even do anything really big. I didn't, I didn't preach a sermon to them. I, I didn't, I didn't even really share a lot of verses. It just kind of came out and they were watching me do life. All right. Especially right now, this time be aware. Okay. Right? We can, we can get into the hustle and the bustle of the Christmas season. And it's wonderful. There's good stuff. But then we can start to get stressed out, right? People catch us in a store and we're running and we got 49 things to do in 49 minutes, right? But even that is how you start to respond can be a huge witness to somebody else. They're like, how are you doing this? Aren't you stressed out? Aren't you frantic? And again, people say this all the time, right? I can't wait for this to be over, right? What if you find the joy in it? What, what, what do people see the peace in it as you're walking through it? And you're like, well, you know what? Here's, here's what I found. This, the, this is what Jesus has done in my life. And so when they observe it, right? This verse says that he put a new song in your mouth. The great thing is you don't actually have to sing. <laughs> All right. You can, if someone catches you singing, that, that's fine. 
but it can just be something that's coming out of your mouth, right? That song of renewal and repair and restoration. This is what God's done. And it goes on to, we're going to jump to another psalm. Similar in the idea, but I want you to see the context of it. Psalm 57. It says, when he had fled from Saul into the cave. Talking about David. All right? So w- w- David's on, on a real sunny day, and everything's great, and he writes this psalm. Actually, no. Right? He's running for his life, literally. It's not a metaphor. It's like David's on the run. He's being hunted down. He's being attacked. And so what does he write in this psalm? We're only going to read one verse here, but it's an important verse. Have mercy on me, my God. Have mercy on me. For in you I take refuge. I will take refuge in the shadow of your wings until the disaster has passed. All right. One of our favorite things to do in the Benson house is enjoy a good snowstorm. Anybody else? We haven't had a good one in a while. Some prerequisites, of course, that nobody has to go anywhere or be out. Okay, yes, I, trust me, I, don't, it's not, I want people to be safe, right? But I, I took this, I didn't take this picture, but I found this picture, right? It was, and, and, and emotion helps, right? And, it, and it's really kind of fun, right? Or, or when, you, when you have a good snowstorm, right? And we've gotten disappointed, too. And they're like, oh, yep, 7 to 14 inches. And you're like, woohoo! And they didn't even get a snow day last year. A one delayed opening. Boo. Okay. Especially when you have nowhere to go. Okay. When that works, when you have somewhere to go, trust me, I understand you don't like the snow. All right. But when you have a good one, right? It's fun. You, you, you bundle up, right? You're like, all right, we're hunkering down. We're staying here. One of our, our traditions, and we didn't get it to do it last year. We watched the first Narnia movie because it's covered in snow. Right? And it's got to be snowing out there, so it feels like the movie's happening right at the same moment. You can steal that, right? There's also a prayer that goes along with this when Connie was little because the lights went out one time. I don't even think it was during a snowstorm. So that prayer has found its way into our prayers that the lights won't go out. So yes, that's in there too. Don't want it so stormy that the lights go out and the heat goes off. But there's snacks. There's hot cocoa, Right? And what do you do? You ride out the storm, and you kind of enjoy it, right? Anyone? And we, 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 we're, on, we're on tap for a good snowstorm like that. But what happens when it's not fun? The psalmist is not talking about a snow day, right? What happens when it's not fun, and you have to go out in it? It's a scary storm. There, there's a, a tornado warning, right? We don't live in a place where, they, where people have that, where they literally, that warning goes off and you need to find shelter and you need to have that on your property or else, man, it's going to be bad. And I want that picture in our mind, right? Because that's scary. And that, that's where David's speaking out of. He's on the run for his life. Let's go back to this verse. And he says, I'm going to take refuge. I'll take refuge in the shadow of your wings. There's that picture again, that nearness, that closeness. And I'm going to stay here until the disaster has passed. This word take refuge means this, to have hope, to put trust. I encourage you to read Psalm 40 and Psalm 57 in its entirety. I'm just touching on there. Tim, are you ready? All right, we got one more chair to get in for this week. I'm trying to find the smallest chair I could find. This is an Alex and a Tim and a Frank and a Mike-sized beach chair, just so you know. All right? I want you to realize, right? This is where we run sometimes. And there's a room. The great thing is, even when Alex sits in this, that his feet don't touch the ground. Oh, man. I might be stuck in this chair. Oh. Anyone grow up watching the big comfy couch? That's what this feels like right now. All right? But I want you to see something, right? There's plenty of room. There's plenty of room for all the baggage that we bring. Right? We bring stuff, and we're like, oh, God, God can't handle that. And like, no, there's room. There's plenty of room. Now there's sand, too. I might be wearing sand. There's room for me and the, the, the baggage. All right? 
And the great thing is, when it's one of those storms we got to ride out, we got to really ride it out right. So, you got to make sure that you're going to ride it out properly. So, you put your luggage aside, put your baggage there. This is for you, Mike Bendick. And you ride it out. And you're like, you know what? I'm staying here. I'm going to ride this out. I got hope. I got trust. And I'm staying here. It's big enough. I can handle all my stuff. I, I, I'm not worried about it. I, I'm going to stay here. Right? And that, that's that picture. Like, David is literally in a cave. Like that, and, and he's setting up camp. And he doesn't know. Right? He's going to wait patiently on the Lord. And like, all right. Well, I'm going to wait until you tell me what to do. Right? And, 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 and sometimes that's what we have to do. Now, now we don't get excited like it's a snow day. Woo, hold on. There you go. You never know what's going to happen at True Light. We might not start to get excited, but I want you to, to let your heart not be nervous and at peace and realize there is comfort and security and safety. Why? Because the Bible proclaims it and our life has an opportunity to show it. But we have to do what the verses say. We have to wait patiently on the Lord. Now, remember, we talked about actively waiting. It doesn't mean we get to sit in a chair all day and do that. But that's where our heart is. Our heart is like, all right, I'm, I'm going to stay steady. And there's room for that stuff. And, and you know what? It's amazing that sometimes when we wait upon the Lord, he deals with our baggage and our stuff. And, he, and it gets lighter. We covered that already. And you can have hope, and you can put your trust in Jesus, just like that blanket. He wraps right around you. There's that picture, right? We, we already read it. In the shadow of your wings. And that's that picture in the natural world, right? When, when a bird or a hen grabs her chicks, right? Really close. Really close. And that's that picture that Jesus wants. And I can't stand here today and tell you, oh, I know exactly how he'll do it. I don't know. But I, the formula is cry out, ask, he'll respond. And, it, and then he's going to put that song of rescue and renewal and restoration in your heart. He turns, he hears, he answers how he'll do it, when he'll do it. All I know is he will. He absolutely rescues and renews and repairs and restores. And the amazing thing is, when we, we're in the middle of that, that situation that we say, and I like the way David writes this, until the disaster has passed. And sometimes that's how we feel, right? right? We feel like, oh, that was a, this is a disaster. No, stuff couldn't even get worse right now. Are we waiting patiently on the Lord? And realize that it's not just us he's going to rescue. He's got a bigger purpose in it. He's got a bigger purpose on it. And we saw some of that on Wednesday night. It was so beautiful for people to share their stories and their testimonies. Because there is a bigger purpose in some things that people were going through. And God's working out some of those details. Not every story got up here and wrapped up in a nice and neat bow. And it's, oh, it's all perfect now. No, but God's getting the glory and working through these stories. And I want you to have this, realize that he's using our story to make his story famous. Because that's ultimately who we're going to point to. How'd you get through that? How are you getting through that? How are you surviving? How are you at really at rest and at peace? Even though, you, you know, it doesn't mean there's days you don't struggle and you get to point to the calmer of your storms. The one who you're waiting patiently on. And so this is what I want to do. I'm excited for the approach to Christmas, if you know me. I love Christmas time for a lot of different reasons. I, I, I love the, the, the mounting of it uh, to get there. It's probably more exciting than the actual day. <laughs> but even as a Christian, the, all the pieces that are coming together, what, what God has woven through history and what he's doing. And I believe that learning to rest is going to be connected to what we're going to discover next in Scripture in the story of Jesus' birth. And so what I want to do this morning, one last chair in your mind, okay? It's big enough. 
It's still portable, but it's big enough to take all your stuff. And I want to open up our altars in just a minute. And I want you to know that we're going to wait with you. That sometimes it's hard in that waiting. It's lonely in that waiting. Well, when's God going to do it? I don't have, you might think you don't have a story or a testimony to share. You do. But maybe you're like, ah, I'm not there yet. Okay, we want to wait with you this morning. We want to stand alongside of you and say, well, we're going to pray with you. We're, we're going to believe with you and for you because sometimes that's when it gets difficult. Because if we're honest, there's chair after chair after chair. We're lined up together doing the same thing sometimes. We want to stand with you. Sometimes when you feel like I can't even stand anymore in this, I, it feels unbearable. We want to stand with you. And we want to remind you, and you needed maybe just needed that one more reminder again this week that God still rescues he renews, he repairs, and re he restores way better than anything and anyone. Amen? And it's hard to believe that when you're in the middle of it. It's hard to believe it that David could write a psalm like that in a cave while he's literally being hunted to be killed. But he saw it. So this is what I want to do. I'm going to pray because I want you to respond this morning. We're just going to throw some instrumental music on in the midst of this. And I know this was a little shorter than normal. Merry Christmas. You got an early Christmas present. Because this is the important part, is your response. We heard God's word. We heard it. I'll read the two Psalms again real quick, because I want you to hear them. I waited patiently for the Lord. He turned to me and heard my cry. He lifted me out of the slimy pit, out of the mud and mire, he set my feet on a rock, and he gave me a firm place to stand. He put a new song in my mouth, a hymn of praise to our God. Have mercy on me, my God, have mercy on me, for in you I take refuge. I will take refuge in the shadow of your wings until the disaster has passed. Maybe you're in a season, you're like, hey, everything's good. All right. I don't want you to be nervous that oh, what's coming around the corner but we need to learn how to rest in the lord even when things are good because then we start to rest in our own strength oh i'm, I'm good so i guess I, I can like wander from the lord a little bit because everything's okay and what happens the first sign of a storm we run back and we're like oh, oh man or sometimes it's harder to run back sometimes it's more difficult to run back so wherever you're at this morning i don't know every situation but we want to pray for you Claire and I are here. Um, if Gabby or Pastor Joe are around, we're going to pray for you too. And, and we'll stay as long as we can. Don't worry. We'll decorate the church afterwards. We're here all, we're here, we can stay all day if we need to because this is the most important part. So I just want to pray for you this morning. Lord, I pray for each and every person in this room. You know what they're going through. And you know, God, that we've needed to be reminded even these last four weeks of how important it is to rest in you. And I pray if anybody in this room is struggling with whatever it is, it, it might seem insurmountable to them. It might seem like a disaster. It might seem like the water is very calm. Whatever it is, Lord God, I just pray that we just all really realize how important it is to patiently wait upon you. And maybe someone's looking for an answer today. Maybe they're looking for direction. Maybe it's not a, a stormy situation. It's a, it's a quiet situation where they, they feel kind of lost and they're wandering. And especially, Lord God, for the person that is unsure of where they are at with you, God, whether they believe, whether they're following, whatever it may be, God, I pray that people will just respond to you this morning and they will stand to be prayed for, and God, we'll just stand in awe of what you're going to do. And we'll stand on faith in your word and believe you to do the work that only you can do. In Jesus' name.